It is an everlasting conflict, the one of earth and fire. Which one of them is of more importance than the other? These are very notable myths present within practically all mythologies. Their conflict runs as a red thread throughout the biblical stories in particular. Take the Old Testament, for instance. The eternal story of Adam and Eve, it tells us exactly what happened that made fire gain power over earth. Because Eve is the embodiment of the earth element, and Adam the embodiment of the fire element, in a human form, within a human consciousness. But do we know that, for instance, in that very Old Testament, it is told that Eve isn't Adam's first wife. Adam's first wife was Lilith, also an embodiment of Earth, but Earth with completely different qualities. And the conflict between Adam and Lilith, the primordial conflict, lies in the fact that Lilith refused to submit to Adam. She refused to acknowledge his supremacy. She said, we are equal that originally we are made equal, not that she is superior, but that they are equal, and so let's build our relationship like equals do. And what did Adam the Tattletale do? He ran to his creator and said, she doesn't want to submit to me. And the conflict took place, and Lilith left Adam. In other words, the rare earth layer stopped submitting to this fire. As a result, Tsebaoth was forced to create another lady with a different set of qualities. It is the earth layer of Demetra we are talking about, that in these terms here is referred to as Eve, who totally submitted to her spouse without any protest nor claims of equality. This is how patriarchy established itself in the world. Fire element consumes the earth element. Fire drives her, fire controls her. It can dry her up if it wishes to, or freeze her by stepping away if it wants to, leaving nothing behind. Meaning that fruitfulness, the fact of earth's fertility, depends on fire. Fertility depends on fire. Do you agree? Whereas ancient memory, ancient knowledge, absolutely doesn't depend on fire. It is for this reason that Lilith used to say, we are equal. I will acknowledge you and will accept you only on the terms of equality. But if you fire, will start destroying my ancient memory when you don't like it, or will selectively be pointing out with a small ray of light those things you want me to birth, choosing what you want me to manifest and what not, then I'm sorry, dear, we will find no agreement because you have no right to be destroying me and what is within me this way. This legend goes on telling that Lilith, who possessed a high amount of knowledge, broke out from under the yoke of Yahweh, uttered the unutterable name of God, that very tetragrammaton, and left to a territory that wasn't really under his jurisdiction, a place where he could not reach her with his power. Tsebaoth sent three angels in an attempt to convince Lilith to stop fooling around, to which Lilith responded that it ain't gonna work, buddies. And that is when a story begins that in the human consciousness describes Lilith as a demoness, or in other words, a creature that is hostile to humans. But she didn't turn to a hostile creature out of nowhere, not just because she's mean. So the angel said, well, if you don't wish to submit and will, in this world that isn't under jurisdiction of your creator Yahweh Tsebaoth, give birth to creatures of different pagan gods, which they call demons, we will make it so that every day a hundred of your children die. Which means that this way fire will burn 100 thoughts, 100 forms of life, 100 new manifestations of earth that come from pagan deities. Lilith, of course, reacted adequately. She said, well, if this is the way, if you take a hundred of my children, then an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. I will take 100 of your children, meaning human beings, just. Isn't it? I would agree. Absolutely. Or not. Very just. Eve, of course, doesn't act this way. Eve is Adam's wife through and through. She's absolutely Adam's wife. 
And the very Tanakh, the Old Testament, tells us the story of when the fall of man took place and Adam and Eve were chased out from the heavenly tabernacles in order to redeem their sin, redeem their guilt before Yahweh, they took a penitence as a result of which Eve, pregnant with Cain, had to stand for three months in icy water. Wonder who else she could give birth to after that. No wonder that the fellow got such bad genetics. What else could he have done with such a heritage, if we think about it? And it is clear that this didn't occur in reality, that it is just an allegory, an allegory describing to what extent Earth, its fruitful function, is dependent from those in power, from the people who possess power, from the fire element that she can't control, and so on. The functions of Lilith and Adam, if things were right, would have been based on the equilibrium principle of earth and fire. And something could have been born from that, something very different, but it didn't. What we are doing now is compensating for this process. We need them to be equal. What is equality within a human consciousness? The earth element predetermines the structure of karma zero. Twelve proto-foundations connected to one another in some way. And it is the fire element that determines in which way they connect together. Essentially, it is the amount to which the proto-foundations are full that defines how the fire needs to connect them and through which informational channels. Is that clear? I'll explain. If the consciousness, Earth, wants to acquire an experience that says, for example, tradition equals death, it has to connect the proto-foundations in such a way that it can learn and comprehend the traditions of death and, in turn, death as a tradition. Once it has acquired this experience, it should be able to similarly and just as freely switch to a different concept, such as, for example, life equals evil, acquiring experience according to this quality. In other words, by switching when needed to informationally fill these proto-foundations. But the dominance of the fire element will never allow doing this according to the will of the earth element. It says, so, we are now living in a time when love is good. And that's it. So I rigidly connect these two proto-foundations for you with an equality sign and you have no right to acquire any other experience as long as you live in this particular epoch, in this religious environment, in this egregorial structure. And what does that mean? It means that you will be incarnating in an environment where you can get only this rigidly formed experience and will be born in religious conditions, in an epoch and in a body and in a social stratus where you can receive only this type of experience and no other. And should you wish to change the informational feeling of the foundations, if you are feeling sick already of all this love and that the concept that light equals good and that good equals love is also beginning to make you feel sick and that you would actually like to collect some other kind of experience, However, the rigid soldering in the buddhic body, the place where this interaction of fire and earth is manifested, will not allow you to do so. It doesn't allow it. And only through elemental transformation, elemental transfiguration, we can change this predisposition that was created even before we were born. One that didn't even consider that in this life we would have any other choice in terms of what destiny we are to live and what information we are to receive. What we are doing here is a revolution. Do you understand this? Good. It is all described in the legends. If we will stop perceiving those legends as some kind of fairy tale stories, or as a justification of entering a numinous religious state like these fellows at the Wailing Wall constantly do, and will think and analyze them instead, translating everything to an understandable language that is known to us already, then surely a lot more things will become clear. Thereby, reconciling the fire and earth elements is a necessary thing we must do. If earth will prevail over fire, it will also lead to disbalance. We've had this already. It was the system of matriarchy, and it too led us to no good. Because there was no evolution, no expansion. All the stories we know about the Amazons and the matriarchy as a system tell us about an extremely harmonious and comfortable society that would evolve, but rather in depth and not in width, not externally. 
They led no wars of conquest, didn't bother expanding, they didn't do any development, had no interest in science, because a woman that carries a child under her heart has no interest in expansion. She has a whole another function. Respectively, matriarchy couldn't assert any other governing function except for this one. And this means that the civilization does not evolve, and that the task for which this entire process of evolution of the human consciousness was conceived for also will not be fulfilled. And that's not right either. And only when we manage to bring the earth and fire elements to an equilibrium, when the principle of Lilith and Adam gets united and finally comes to an agreement, and none of them play mean and tattletale, then things will advance. Adam and Lilith are our structures within our own consciousness. Lilith is our earth, Adam is our fire. But we will not call them this way, in order not to torture our mental body, as it will instantly start to pull up information that it already possesses, that unfortunately isn't quite right. Therefore, we will call them earth and fire, and will keep in mind that the control over one's buddhic body will be possible and attainable only once they are equal to one another. If there is even a little disbalance, then somebody else will be in control of our values and beliefs, and we will not even be aware of it. Being proud of being a man or being proud of being a woman is the first indication of you having such disbalance. Pride in particular, not regret, but pride. Because this is how humans are created, they have a need to respect themselves for something. And if there's nothing you can respect yourself for, then you will respect yourself for your gender, or for your nationality, as if you would have married for it. And then construct gigantic theories around it, such as women are subhumans and the being one is a punishment, like they did in the Middle Ages, where due to the absence of certain physiological peculiarities, women were considered to be a creature punished by God a subhuman, and therefore she should be totally submitted to man, because she doesn't have that peculiar thing. Jokes aside, this is what is written in all of the tractates of the Middle Ages, with a defined explanation of the reasons why a woman is an inferior creature. Nowadays, there's a disbalance to the other side. And all these disbalances never lead to anything good. Because any attempt of showing pride for something that wasn't initially achieved by you provides the Gregors with ample grounds to take you under their control. They will allow you, with great pleasure, to keep on feeling this illusory sense of pride while forcing you this way to accomplish deeds that will benefit their development in their own interest and not yours. Therefore, there should always be a balance. Doing so with the earth, accepting the earth element, this was the hardest thing we had to do, believe me. Because the rejection of earth, particularly in this function, as a force, with its rights equal to fire, is something we have been forced to do since the very birth. This is genetically encoded in each and every one who has incarnated at least two or three times in a Christian environment. Masterfully embedded, very tightly. And what we were now working with, earth in essence, was the hardest thing. Accepting fire, letting it inside you, this will not be difficult. Balancing them out will be difficult. Adam and Lilith have to come to an agreement, and Eve is but their offspring and nothing else.